Hi, I'm Kent Seacrest with Prairie Quilt, and I'm so excited today to take you through a tour of the Tin Lizzie ESB 18. So let's get started, we have a lot to cover. So the Tin Lizzie ESB 18 is an 18 inch uh, quilting machine from the bed of the machine to the needle. Now across the bed of the machine, you've also got this take up bar on the frame. We carry it and sell it with the Phoenix frame, which is bundled with the machine and installed in your house as part of the package. We just automatically include that in the sale of one of these machines as installation in your home. We leave with it working. Anyway, so you have 18 inches, but you can't quilt all of it because you lose a little bit with the bar. So uh, technically speaking, we start with around 15 inches of quilting area, which seems to be a nice amount of quilting area to be able to quilt in one pass. But let's get started on the machine. One thing that you'll need to know about the machine is how to thread it. So let's get started with that. So I've got some thread here. And the first thing you do when you start to quilt on your new Tin Lizzy ESP18 with your Phoenix frame is to wind a bobbin. So you put your thread on your stand and your stand needs to have the thread guide on top of the spool so that the thread comes off without pulling on the spool. So it comes straight off the top. Then we're gonna go into the thread guide on the bobbin winder and there's a hole here at the beginning. We're gonna feed it from front to back or back to front and then go through the disc. And the key is, is to go down in there. Do you hear that? So you gotta click it down in there good. And then we're gonna come out this hole on the bottom on the other side here. And then like so. And now we're gonna come over to the bobbin winder. So here's the bobbin. We're gonna put it on the machine and then you're going to pull about 12 inches extra of thread and wrap it around the bobbin and you want to wrap it in such a way if you look at the bobbin the thread is in the middle of the bobbin not pulled to the top it'd be real easy to pull it to the top because we're having to wind over the top and the reason why you want to wind in the middle is you want this lever when you flip it over to hold the thread if it holds the thread that way it'll wind when you start the machine now when the machine winds a bobbin, it'll do it while you're quilting and it'll shut off when you're done. So the first thing we have to do to wind the bobbin is turn the machine on and the on off switch is right here. So we're gonna flip it to the power on and we're gonna wait until these green lights right here quit blinking and that's gonna let us know the machine is completely booted. Once the machine is completely booted, now we're gonna turn on our robotics if we got them. And the robotics are right here. And there's a little box right down here and a switch on the side right underneath that cable right there and we're going to flip that switch up like that now when we do that there's a little green light right here that begins to blink and that lets us know that the green box is on so we come around here to our tablet interface and this is how we run the machine when we have the robotics and it went to sleep because nobody's doing anything so we'll touch the button to wake it up and to unlock it, we see the little lock right there. We're just gonna swipe up with our finger and that unlocks our screen so we can begin using our tablet. So we're gonna run the Quilt Magician software by tapping that icon and the machine comes up to the sewing part screen. In the sewing screen to wind a bobbin, we don't wanna be on automatic because that is a stitch regulated mode. We wanna be on manual, so I'm gonna tap that until manual comes up, there it is. Now we have manual. Now, when I touch the go button, it'll wind a bobbin. Now the machine will continue running even after the bobbin is full and back because the machine doesn't stop when the bobbin's unwinding, the bobbin winder stops. So that's an important distinction to know that it will run until the bobbin is full and only shut off the bobbin winder. We have to stop the machine ourselves. So the next thing you do after you turn your machine on is turn the light on to the machine. And the light is represented by a light bulb right here. So it's easy to remember. The light bulb, remember, never comes on when you first turn your machine on. You have to go into the light and then touch the light bulb to turn it on. Then this is the strength right here. You can change stronger or brighter and there's, there it's on. So we also have in this screen the ability to turn off the regular light, turn on the black light. And the black light is used for when we're doing either monofilament thread or tone on tone it can help distinguish colors 
So I'm going to turn on the regular light, but now I don't have my screen. So to get back to my home sewing screen, I touch the home button. It looks like my little house there. So there we go. So now we're back to the home. Now, today we're going to be working in the robotics, but before we do, I've got to put a quilt on here. So we're going to show you how to do that. The bobbin winder in hand, thread in the other. You have it where the thread is coming off on the right side and you drop your bobbin in. And then if you look at the bobbin, there's a slot right here, and that's where you're gonna pull your thread, and I'll show you how that's done. You're gonna pull your thread through the slot like that, all the way down and come to right there. Now you know you've put it in correctly when you pull your thread and the bobbin turns clockwise. That is a pop properly inserted bobbin. Now to set the tension of the bobbin, it's very important to set the tension correctly. So the weight of this bobbin case is 20 grams which just happens to be the about the amount of resistance we want on our thread from our spring on our tension knob. Now this tension is set with that screw right there and it puts pressure on the thread through this spring. So the way to do this properly is to lay the bobbin and the bobbin case in our hand like so and holding the thread that's coming out of the bobbin and stand the bobbin up. And when we do, we lift the bobbin in the air and the bobbin should lift up slightly and then fall right back down, but it's not falling, is it? Now, if I jerk it, it'll fall, but that's not what we wanna do. We want it to fall on its own. Okay, so I got a screwdriver, it's a little bitty one. Now, you'll have a little black one that came with your machine. You can use that. However, the screw we're going to adjust, you have a little bitty screw here and then a big one inside of a circle. It's the big one inside of a circle. We're gonna adjust that one. So it's righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. So right here on this screw, if I turn it to the left, watch this. I'm, you're not gonna hardly notice any turn at all. That was it, I turned it. I don't know if you saw that, but that was how much I turned it. Now I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna lay it in my hand, pull the thread straight out of the bobbin case, stand the bobbin case up, and it should fall. It's wanting to fall, yep, there it goes. It, fall, it fell and I didn't jerk it down. So that is perfect. That means the amount of resistance that this bobbin case has given us is just the right amount. So now I'm going to take the bobbin case and insert it in the machine. Now, for all of those that learned how to put in a bobbin case that's like this, by pulling the lever out like so to insert it, I want you to relearn that. I want you to change what you do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the bobbin and the bobbin case like so, and when we put it in, we're not gonna have that lever pulled, and because of that, we're going to get a clear snap when we put it in the machine. So, a lot of people ask me about this little squiggly here, should we thread the thread through there? No. You don't use that. If you use that, it'll change the tension. It'll make it tighter on bottom, so don't go in there. So when we put this in, the proper way to put this bobbin case in the machine is this line of this latch is horizontal, perfectly flat. If you put it in incorrectly, like angled like this, or like this, it's not correct. It needs to be perfectly horizontal. So we'll go around to the front of the machine. You got a post right here on your hook. You're gonna slip that on your post and then make and then kind of wiggling it so that it goes in perfectly horizontal. And when you push it, you get a definite snap. Did y'all hear that? That way we know it's in correctly. If it's in flat and it snapped when it went in, we're in good. So now that we're done winding our bobbin and we need to have the machine threaded, we're going to take a second thread. It's always good to have two spools of the same color so you can wind bobbins as you quilt. This way you don't have to wind all your bobbins at the beginning of your quilt. We're gonna teach you how to thread the 10 Lizzie ESP 18. So you're gonna thread it from front to back on the first thread guide, go around to the back, and then go from front to back on the last thread guide. You're skipping the middle one. Now, after the first thread guide, you're gonna to go to the second thread guide and it's the exact same. It's three holes. You're gonna go in the first one down, come back over the top and go in the third one down, skipping the second one. Why do we skip the second one? If we went in the second one, it would put too much tension on these. Now, if we happen to be working with thread that needed more tension, we might put it in there, but you're not normally going to, we don't need it today. So now, my next place to thread is in the tension knob. And this is where a lot of people make a mistake. A lot of people make the mistake of just going like this and just wrapping the thread gently around the tension disc. But what I need to do to get, be successful when I thread my machine is I need to pull it in tight See how it sunk in there? It's like floss in your teeth. You need it to get all the way in there. You come all the way around, and then you're gonna catch this spring right here, just like that, 
and come down and you're gonna go around this finger right there and then you're gonna come through this thread guide right there. Now we're gonna take it to the take-up lever. So the take-up lever is right here and we're gonna thread that eye from right to left. Now if you ask yourself or ask me, why are these needing to be threaded? Why can't I just slide them in like I do on my home sewing machine? You don't want them to come out while you're quilting. So these are designed to be harder for them to come out if you have to thread them like this. Now you're gonna go into this thread guy here and you have to kind of give it a little tug to snap it in here. You can thread it in there. And this one just slips in as well. And now there's one more thread guide on the end of the needle right here. But before I put that in, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about needles. The needle is not like your household sewing machine. This shank here is perfectly round. If you spin it all the way, it's perfectly round. So if you look at the needle right at the eye right here, right above the eye, there's a dent in the needle. If I'm going to roll it sideways, you might be able to see that dent. That dent right here is called a scarf. That scarf will point to the back of the machine. So to put the new needle in, we'll want the eye of the needle from front to back and the scarf pointing away from you, the quilter. So to put the needle in, with the screw just loose and not removed that holds it, I insert it in there. And the way I know that I have the needle in all the way is this hole right here is actually where the top of the needle goes in. So I can look through that hole and I can see the needle hitting the top of that hole. That way I know it's in all the way. And then you can use another sewing needle to put in that hole right there to align your needle. So if you take another sewing needle and put it in the eye, that will allow you to control that needle and twist it and put it in. So now I'm gonna tighten that screw down. And now I know, because I can tell, the eye is pointed front to back and the scarf is dented right here. Now you may hear people say, and I hear it said, that you can twist your needle one way or another way and it will actually stitch better. You want that scarf completely straight back. I would not twist it at an angle. That is not the best way for a properly adjusted machine. The best way is to have that needle straight back. Now I'm going to thread the next to last thread guide. You can see there how I threaded through that hole. And now I'm gonna thread the eye of the needle from front to back. So there we go. If the thread twists around the needle, just pull it down and get that twist off the needle. So the needle is threaded and the machine is ready to stitch. We have the bobbin case in. We have our bobbin winding up here. And when it's full, it'll turn off while we're quilting. We won't even have to pay attention to it. And we'll be able to switch bobbins right in the middle of a quilt. And we'll already have a full one. We won't have to worry about stopping and threading the machine and winding another bobbin. So that's a really wonderful feature of this machine. So the next thing we have to do is we got to put our quilt on. So this is our take up bar and this is what we pin our backing to. And the proper way to do it is to find the center of the frame. On the Phoenix frame, the center is marked by where the two halves meet. If you get the 10 foot or the 12 foot, this mark will always be in the middle of your frame and you can mark it as we did on your leader all the way down to the edge. And then you take your quilt top and if you fold it in half, you can find your center and then take your center and pin it to your leader. So the proper way to pin your quilt back to your leader is by aligning the center. And by the way, before you start, it has to be square on the end so that when you roll it up, it's the same length all the way across so that your quilt backing, if it's skewed, then you're not gonna get a good roll on your, on your quilt backing. And also you want your backing to be four inches bigger than your quilt top in every direction for your quilter or for yourself whenever you quilt. So the way to do this is, is to line your quilt backing up with the edge of your leader and then when you pin it, always pin it the same distance from the edge. Like if, if this is the two edges, if I come here, I want to be this far every time. I don't want to be here one time and there the next. 
want to be the same distance. That way, if it's square, it'll stay square. Also, as I'm pinning this, I start in the middle and I work either right or left, and then I go all the way down, and then I turn around and go the other way from the middle out. So I got my quilt backing right side down, pinned to my take-up bar, all the same all the way across, about every four or five inches. And now, what I need to do is I need to pin my quilt backing to my back backing bar, which is this bar here. This would be my quilt top, this would be my quilt backing. So I made a real short dummy backing today, so it's not very long, but if you had, say, a 74 inch backing, doesn't matter however long, you're gonna roll most of it onto your top. So to do that, we want the backing to go under. So with that, we're gonna roll it like this so that the fabric goes under. If you roll it wrong, it goes over the top like this, and you don't want that. You want it to go under. So we use the little hand crank here, which makes it easier, and we roll our backing till we get most of it on, and we need just enough left in order to pin it to the backing bar. Now, before you do this, you need to have already found the center of your backing, and you're going to do the same thing that you did on your top. You're going to find the center, and then starting in the middle, and doing it the same way where you pin them even, and pin them the same amount every time. Start in the middle and work all the way across. So I got the back pinned to the backing leader bar, but I had made a mistake if you watched me before and I had the backing laying over this bar and then I pinned it all. And when I did, that was wrong because your backing needs to go under. So to fix that, if you do that like I do it, I do it all the time, honestly, I just take the Velcro and just peel the leader off, I peel the backing leader off and then I tuck it under and then just put it right back on and I'm fixed just like that without having to repin it. So now that I've got it on the backing bar, the leader pinned to the backing, now I'm gonna roll it off the take-up bar onto the backing bar because that's where it needs to be. It looks kind of rough where it's rolled onto the take-up bar, but that's just a pre-roll. That really doesn't bother me. So to roll it onto the backing bar, if I turn it this way, it would be wrong. If I turn it this way, it'll be right. So we're gonna turn it like this and we're gonna roll the whole backing back on to the backing bar. Now, if I see something going wrong, just wanna fix it as I go, if I see it not rolling good, and whatever you do to your quilt backing, do to the whole quilt backing, if you pick just one little piece of it and fix it, you gotta fix it all, because if you don't, your backing may roll poorly, like you're starting to see these creases, I'm gonna fix those. And to me, it's easier when you roll it to lift your bar for your quilt top out of the way like that. And then if I just fix, say this and go on, this has been manipulated different than the rest of the quilt back. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna manipulate the whole quilt back evenly the same. So I'm gonna pull and rub my hands all the way down it. So it's all manipulated the same. And now I can continue to roll and see I've got another little pinch there. I'm gonna pull that out but I gotta go down here and pull the same. I want it to be the same everywhere. If I don't do that, I'm not gonna get an even roll. So whatever I do, I do it everywhere. And now I'm getting a nice, good roll. So I'm gonna stop where my quilt backing and my take-up bar still have a little bit of room there. I don't wanna quilt into my leader. However, I need to be able to see it so I know where the edge of my quilt back is. So now that I've got it where I want it, I'm gonna lock it in. And there's these little locks on the end that you flip them till they come down and these make contact with those little gears and that locks it in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on my take-up bar. I'm gonna flip that little lever right there so it locked into those gears. So now it won't move. The question you're gonna have is, is how tight should this be? A lot of people, the biggest rookie mistake is pull this too tight. You do not want this tight. If you, when you're tightening either this bar, the backing bar, or the take-up bar, if you're tightening it and you see this bar bend, you have gotten too tight. So I don't care how tight you get this, as long as this bar does not bend at all from the rolling up of your quilt. But now that we have the quilt back pin both ends, we would pin or uh, put our uh, quilt batting on. So to do that, this is our take-up bar for our 
quilt top, we're gonna lay our batting on there. And I want my batting at least four inches bigger on, on all edges also. My batting doesn't have to be on here perfect. Just as long as I just go right up to the leaders, what I do, and let the excess hang off. And because it's cotton, it's going to want to grab. Uh, so I'm going to smooth it out so I don't get any pinched batting in there. There we go. Now I could pin my quilt top and roll it on this bar, but I don't usually do that. I let my quilt top hang because I don't want to stretch it at all. So I let it hang, but I do want it on there straight. My quilt top should be square at this point. And the best thing that I can do is to sew a perfectly straight line on here. Because I have the robotics on the quilter, I have the ability to lock the machine in to a vertical lock so that it can't move vertically. It can only move horizontally. So I go into my robot icon on my tablet, I tap it, and now I'm in my quilting area. But before I'm able to use the robot, the first thing it wants me to do is to tell the machine where it is because it just woke up, I just turned it on. It doesn't know where it is. I'm gonna tell it with two points, the back left corner and the front right corner, and it's going to, uh, then the machine will be awake and know where it is. So let's go to the back left corner. So I go all the way to the left, and then this is what I do here. I always go past the quilt, and then I go all the way to the bar until I'm against the bar, and then I even give it a little push with my hand, and then I go up here on the tablet and I add that point. And now it's just looking for one more point, and if you read it, it's telling you, to move to the front right corner and you can even see the green arrow showing you where to move so we're going to go all the way to the right all the way forward past the end of the quilt pulling it to me i'm going to add the second point and there my table width that i just defined is 75 inches by 15.6 inches I'm just gonna hit the check mark to make that screen go away. And that red box right there on the screen represents my quilt area I just defined. So now I'm going to be doing everything inside of that from now on. But now that that's done, I can do what I talked about earlier, and that is my vertical lock. So I'm gonna to go to the home button here on the left. And from the home button, I have my locks here on the right. So if I touch this one with the arrows front to back, that means it locks it from moving front to back and only moves perfectly sideways. So I'm gonna unlock it so I can get into position. I'm gonna get on the batting on the edge of the fabric. And whenever I, I quilt, I wanna take one stitch and the one stitch button is this arrow button. I'm gonna touch it took one stitch and I can pull my bobbin thread up. With my bobbin thread pulled up, I can now begin to stitch, but I wanna lock that in first. So I'm gonna push my vertical lock button, excuse me. And now when I touch the power button, it will quilt when I begin to move the machine. So I touch it and it'll start to quilt when I move it. Now right here, this machine will stitch up to 3,000 stitches a minute, which is extremely fast. But resist the temptation to do that because whoops if you go that fast you're likely to break the thread having only two layers of fabric well layer batting and a layer of fabric so you want to go slow it does it doesn't break the thread when you go that fast with the extra layer on top but it's made to have that extra layer on top See how perfectly straight that line is? I don't even have to really be careful. It's just automatically well done. When I get to the end of my fabric batting, which is right here, then I can unlock it and then turn off the machine. And now when I move away, you always end your quilting like this. You always move away, grab your top thread, move back to your last stitch, holding the loop, take a stitch, move away, and you'll pull three threads up. Those two threads are your bobbin, and then you see your needle thread, and you cut all three of those threads. There we go. 
So that's how you'll always end your quilt. And I'll do that again more and you'll see that again. But for now, I've got my backing on and I've got my batting with my backing and batting attached with a perfect straight horizontal line. That'll keep my batting from moving, but it'll also give me a straight line to lay my quilt top on. So I'm gonna get my quilt top next. I'm going to lay my quilt top on that line. And if you want, you can even use basting spray here. I don't recommend pins because if you use pins, you might hit a pin when you sew, and I don't recommend that. Don't recommend sewing over pins. It's all fine until it's not when you sew over a pin. And so you really wanna make sure that your quilt top is lined up with that line because this is how square your quilt top is gonna be when it sews. If it's crooked here, it's gonna be crooked the entire quilt. So just take your time and this batting acts like Velcro it just kind of grabs your fabric if you're using cotton batting. That's why I prefer cotton batting or one reason why I prefer it. Today what I'm going to show you is just a simple edge to edge pattern. You can choose whichever you like. The Tin Lizzie Quilt Magician comes with over 300 patterns and we're going to show you how to do your first row. So the first thing you need to decide is how tall you want your row to be. We're doing edge to edge or pantograph edge to edge and we have to decide. So I'm going to make a decision that I want mine to be eight inches tall. And if that's the case, then I need to make a pattern box that is eight inches tall. And to do that, I go to the top of my quilt and I put my needle over the edge of the quilt where it's on the line there. And I look at this number right here on the screen where it says Y 3.74. So I know the edge of my quilt is 3.74 inches from the edge of the bar and I also know that I have a half inch, the top here that's gonna be covered in binding and if I don't want my panto to go under the binding, I come down a half inch. So from 3.74, I add a half inch to that, it's gonna be 4.24. So I come down to 4.24 and then I'm gonna go over to the edge of the quilt and the same thing, I got a half inch binding there. So I'm gonna go to But at 4.24, if I'm going to make my quilt pattern eight inches tall, I need to add eight inches to that. So I'm gonna to come to eight plus 4.24 is 12.24. So I'm gonna come down to 12.24. There we go, 12.24, and I'm gonna to begin to add my pattern box. The pattern boxes are made under a tab on the left called layout, it's right here. If you forget what any icon is on this machine, you have a little I button. You tap the button and it turns white and then you tap the thing you wanna know about and it tells you what that is. So it's a quick way to learn your Quilt Magician tablet. Touch it again, there we go. And now I'm in the layout tab. Now once I've opened the application of layout, over here are the functions I can do. Now I've already got my quilt area, which is like a pattern box on the screen, but I wanna add a pattern box to put my pattern in. I never wanna quilt inside of this. I'm just gonna let that be as a definition of where the quilt artist can work. So I'm gonna add it by using the plus button. So with that, I get this little set of buttons down here, which tells me to set the first point in the pattern box. Now I've already moved my needle where I want it to be 12.25, I'm, I'm in within one 100, so I'm gonna hit the add button. And now I'm gonna go over to the right. To 12.25, and I can click the add button for point two, and I could add four points and create a box but there's a quicker shortcut in this new software that allows you to add a box. I'm not gonna add a point there because I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go up to this corner up here and be at that 4.24 we looked at earlier. I'm gonna use two points to add this box, the one on the bottom left and this one. And whenever I'm done adding a box, I hit a check mark. And if you add two points, it assumes you want a rectangle and, it, and I put in this point in the bottom left corner, and I put in this point in the top right corner, 
bottom left and top right, and it created the other two points for me. It's so just a quick way to add a pattern box, and I encourage you to use it because it allows you to not have to remember numbers over here. It just makes it easier. So basically on my screen, I'm looking at an eight inch tall box in which to put my quilt pattern. So now if I've already decided which quilt pattern I want to use in here, I just go to my patterns and in my patterns, they come up and I can see them all and I can just go through them like this. And I'm gonna choose the open meander. So now that I've got that on the screen, if I tap it, it'll select it and see how I put all the handles around it and the little red box there will rotate it. What I wanna do is I wanna drag it and make it bigger than the eight inch square. Whoops. So I touch on the corner when I drag it bigger. And now in this condition with it bigger, it will automatically fill my pattern box for me if I do it right. Now to do it correctly, I'm in the edit tab because after you select a pattern, it automatically goes into the edit tab. And then I have all these applications over here I won't get into all of them. I will use some of them now, and you can use the I button, tap it, and tap the, the application function on the right and learn how to use it. The one I choose to use is this one, is your fill tool. So I touch it, and this gives me all kinds of options on filling it, but the one I'm interested in right now is the auto fill button. Because I drag it bigger, I can tap auto fill, and it just filled my pattern box in automatically, just like that with a tap of a button. And you'll notice, that you have a green circle right here and a red square right there and that indicates the beginning and the ending of the quilt pattern. The purpose of that is so that you know where it's going to start and where it's going to end and I do recommend always quilting the same direction every row. So if I did a different pattern the next time and it was reversed I would want to change the direction of the pattern which is possible by using this function right there. If I tap on the eye and tap on it you'll see that reverses the path but that's not an issue because this one's right. So now I'm actually ready to quilt. Now I could uh, go and start quilting, but my machine would have to move all the way over there. And a lot of times we have heavy seams or something in a quilt that might catch it to cat, cause it to catch. So I'm gonna move it myself and get it close to where it's gonna start so that it doesn't have to fight its way back. So now I'm ready to start quilting. And to do that, I do it from the home tab. I touch the home tab and from here, you need to go over here to your stitches per inch and decide how many stitches per inch. You can type it in as a number, like 11, and hit the check mark. And now I'm 11 stitches per inch. And if I don't touch the needle and thread and have that highlighted, it basically will just move the machine. It won't stitch. You'll just get the machine moving. So then I'm gonna hit the green dot. And when I do, the machine is telling me what it's gonna do. It will move to the start of the pattern block and the pattern will start. Verify that the needle is up position. And it is. Now I have some other options here. I'm not going to talk about them right now, but I, I read the, the information. I hit the check mark to agree with it. And now the machine will move to the starting position. It'll take one stitch so that I can pull up the bobbin thread. And that's what it tells me. To pull up the bobbin thread, what you do is you grab the tail of the needle thread. You move the machine out of the way and give it a little tug and your bobbin thread comes up. Now I don't have to worry about getting my needle back exactly over that spot. The machine knows what to do. I'm just gonna hold my threads gently. Do not hold them tightly and touch the check mark on the dialog box on your screen and the machine will go back to the beginning, tie a knot and then begin the pattern. While it's quilting on the right side here, you've got a number, this one's 80, and an arrow up and an arrow down. And you can tap it while it's moving if you like, and that will slow down the top speed of the machine. And the benefit to that is the ability to slow the machine down in tough areas or speed it up when the going is easy and you can get done quicker but it allows you to control the speed the machine moves. And of course the machine will stitch faster if it moves faster because it has a stitch regulator on it. And you get to the end, the machine will stop and tie a knot. You always move the machine away. This is what you'll do every time it ends. Grab the top thread, move back to the last stitch, take a stitch, 
move away, and then you got three threads, cut all three threads. There we go, so that row is done. So now, we need to roll the quilt. But something I forgot to show you, and you should do every time you quilt, is on the edge here where you have extra batting, put a piece of scrap fabric here before you quilt and test your tension, make sure it's good. So to roll the quilt, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to this end, we're gonna unlock our backing bar, and we're not gonna unlock this bar because we're gonna roll it, and you can see the quilt roll, and you're gonna roll it to where you have access to the last quilting area right there. Now we're gonna roll this up and be certain not to flex this bar when you tighten this up and then lock it so you're locked and let that hold. After you get that done, smooth your quilt top out. Make sure you don't feel any ripples in your batting. When everything feels good, now you're ready to reposition your pattern box. Now to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to layout. That's where our pattern box is. Now we don't need to add a pattern box because we're ready to go. We're gonna continue this pattern. We're gonna go to the wrench. We're gonna tap the wrench and now we can lay two points. So I'm gonna put my needle right over the last stitch of the last row. And when I do, read this number on the screen, uh, 346 and I'm gonna add that point and then I'm gonna go up here to the far right stitch, the last stitch, which is 6930, but it's also 2.96. I'm gonna add that point because I want this pattern to be tucked tight. Every, every row of pantographs are different. These, you don't want any space between them. This is the best way to do it. And when I start now, even though my pattern doesn't fill my box anymore, I'm not using my pattern box to size my pattern anymore, so I don't care that it's bigger, but I do want to know if it's going to hit my bar. And this bottom row represented the bar because I came all the way down, and that lets me know I'm not going to hit my bar, but I put my top point in the right place because when the, the quilt software moves my pattern in the box, it always tucks it all the way up and all the way to the left so that I know I'm correct by putting my needle here making my pattern box here because as you can see, that red box is right even with the lower edge of this quilt pattern. So now when I start quilting, it's going to sew that next row perfect. So what I'll do is now we go to home, touch the green dot, touch the check mark, pull my bobbin thread up. Touch the check mark. See, when you have zero space on this pattern from row to row, it gets this close and that's it. Doesn't get any closer. So when you're all done, it looks good. You can't tell where the one row started, another one ends. They look like all one big quilting area. Every pattern is different. And thank you very much for joining us today with the 10 Lizzie 18 ESD. We hope you learn and if you have questions, feel free to post in the comments and we'll do what we can to answer your questions. Thanks for coming.